Hello, Alan Ryder with the Southeastern Railway Museum. Welcome to another chapter of our video series on getting the switch engine, former Southern Railway 8202 going and getting it back in service. Uh, this video is going to be about the air brake system and uh, it's been driving us crazy for quite some time since we got it uh, up and running. It's been a rather irritating problem that Andrew's worked on and Kevin's worked on and we finally figured out what it is and it's been quite an adventure of rabbit holes and dead ends and such as that but we got her so uh, before we get going on the video I thought I would explain a little bit about how railway air brakes work um, it's a simple concept that gets very complicated over time so without further ado we will begin. So locomotives have two air brake systems. Uh, one is what they call an independent brake valve or independent brake system. That's this valve here. And that works by directly putting air into the locomotive brake cylinders for stopping. Uh, very good for switching, handling the locomotives. Locomotives are set up so that uh, or most locomotives are set up so that this can be connected to the rest of the locomotives. So the independent brake valve controls the brakes on the locomotive. And it's a straight air system, which means the more you put the handle in apply, which is where it is now, <coughs> that's release, uh, the more air goes to the brake cylinders directly, straight air. The brake system that controls the cars and also the locomotive is called the automatic brake valve, automatic brake system, clank, automatic brake system, that's this, automatic brake valve. And that works a little bit differently. <clears throat> Early on, uh, when air brakes first were started to be used in the 1880s, they figured out that, hey, if you have an air leak in the train, you lose your brakes. So this works in kind of an adverse way. You charge the brake system, the brake pipe, up to, in this case, 90 PSI. And this charges reservoirs on the cars. And then when you want to stop, you uh, let air out of the brake pipe. And <clears throat> there's reservoirs on the cars that, uh, through what's called a triple valve, uh, applies air to the uh, brake cylinders on the cars, and that's how you stop. Here's a little demonstration using our little uh, caboose train as a uh, example. Uh, GE 50 tonner, a couple of cabooses. This is the control valve on our NNW caboose. The old terminology is triple valve, same thing. It uh, directs the uh, air from the locomotives either into the reservoirs or into the brake cylinders to apply the brakes. And panning over here, there is the brake reservoir for this caboose. This is the brake stand on our little yellow locomotive. We'll make an application. You'll see the pressures go down on the gauges. You'll see the piston come out on the caboose, and we'll make a release. You'll see the pressure go back up on the gauges, and then the piston retract as the brakes release. And a release. So that's a 10 cent tour of how railroad air brakes work. And now the, our problem is the way this system works, uh, long ago 
people figured out that if you wanted to control a large volume of air, you can control a very small volume, and that small volume then can be used through a system of valves to control the big value, volume. And on the air brake system, that small volume is called the equalizing reservoir. So when you apply brakes on this system, which is a number six, uh, they all work pretty much the same. It reduces air in the equalizing reservoir. And then <clears throat> through valves in the, in the brake valve, uh, that reduces air in the brake pipe and applies the brakes. In our case, it's a rather odd problem in that somehow or another, the air, main reservoir air, that's your reservoir on the locomotive, which is usually around 130 pounds, uh, is getting slowly into the equalizing reservoir and building it up and uh, causing bad things to happen because you don't want your equalizing reservoir to do weird things, which is what's happening. So we think we know what the problem is, and we're going to get into that. Um, Locomotive air brakes can have all the kinds of different features and this locomotive has just about every feature you can imagine and uh, one of those features <coughs> is uh, a sort of an alertness system so that if somebody doesn't pay attention um, the brakes will come on and that's through the dead man pedal and uh, so if your foot comes off the dead man pedal or if there's a wrench or toolbox or something holding it down and it falls off the brakes come on and the engine stops that's controlled by that gizmo right there which is called an N1A and we think we have a problem with that Andrew's taken it apart more than once say hi Andrew hi um, so we're gonna look into that a little bit more so this is an air brake diagram, uh, as you can see looking at it. There's a lot of pipes that go a lot of different places. And uh, this area right here, I've color coded the, the lines mostly so I can figure out where it goes because I'm no expert on 6L or 6BL brake. I'm learning a lot. But uh, anyway, there's only one place that we have found where main reservoir air gets into what's called the equalizing line. Uh, that's the equalizing reservoir right there on the diagram. It comes from the automatic brake valve. Normally it would go from the automatic brake valve right to the equalizing reservoir. The reservoir is just so that there's a little bit more volume. And But because this locomotive has extra features, this goes over here to this application portion, which is where when toolbox falls off the dead man pedal and the brakes come on, uh, this is what does it. But main reservoir comes in here through this volume area and we think that somehow or another it's getting past this piston and getting into the equalizing reservoir. So that's what we're going to investigate. More to come. Well that day turned out to be an exercise in frustration for a number of reasons and uh, we'll go back to the diagram and I'll explain a little bit of why and uh, despite the frustration I think we figured out where we get to go with this to solve our little issue. Plan A was to plug and cap this number seven line that's the main reservoir that goes to this application portion. This whole N1A is called a safety control device but anyway uh, capping the main reservoir would take the, pressure, the uh, air off the bottom of this where it would stop the leakage going into uh, <clears throat> equalizing reservoir line. Um, and this thing is sprung loaded so unless there's uh, air pressure to overcome main reservoir it's going to stay in the normal position which means it should work right. So that was plan A. It didn't work, it turns out it's because we got the wrong line that we plugged. We'll ex I'll explain a bit of that later. The second plan B was to connect the equalizing reservoir line from here to here and completely bypass this whole N1A as far as the equalizing lines. 
and uh, that turned out to be a bit of a challenge because flaring these old copper fittings, uh, copper tends to get harder and uh, more difficult to bend as it gets older and we have a solution for that. You just heat it up with a torch and it'll anneal it, but we didn't do that. So we got some leaks and it took us quite a struggle to flare what we did. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't work either. And we figured out why, we think. But uh, this is called the equalizing portion. And as I explained earlier, um, the way this system works is you control the air pressure in a small volume and that small volume uh, with a pilot valve, which is what that is, that shifts up to uh, control the, regulate the pressure in the brake pipe. And on this, there are actually two, there's supposed to only be one. The um, exact same thing as in the automatic brake valve, if we flip the page over to this one, that's the same thing in the automatic brake valve. Supposedly, when you go to this system, you're supposed to remove that and put a blanking plate in. And that isn't what this locomotive has. It has a regular automatic brake valve, but they seem to play well together, or they did. Uh, but what happened, when we tied these two together, there's no pressure here, so this shifted up because that's what it's supposed to do when you lower equalizing reservoir it's supposed to open up and lower brake pipe brake pipe pressure so we had a tremendous air blow through the bottom of this so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to blank off this uh, equalizing reservoir portion and see if that fixes it and then we'll deal with some of the other things so here's the N1A the real McCoy not a diagram and all the air lines come in and onto a pipe bracket. This is one side of it. I've marked the numbered the lines. Uh, the pipe brackets got numbers on them, but they're hard to read, so I was able to figure them out and mark them so it's easier to, to uh, identify. This is the other side of the pipe bracket. And you can see these lines are really close together in places and it's pretty hard sometimes to figure out which ones go where. They're all nice and tight. And they go under the cab floor. So there's where they come out and where they go. So, <clears throat> so we wanted to cap the number seven line. And we really didn't want to do it at the pipe bracket because these flanges um, are a bit challenging and hard hard to get wrenches on. It can be done. Uh, so fortunately most of these lines have unions, uh, flare unions in places. But uh, so we traced the seven line back and we did it, I did it a couple of times and Andrew did it a couple of times and we still got it wrong. So that's why we gave up. We thought we had it and we just were confused. So we tried uh, the second option which was to bypass the equalizing reservoir lines. And if you look here it's you can see how accessibility is a challenge but this is the number five line. We cut it. Uh, the other end is floating around here somewhere like right there. Put a piece of copper tubing into the number six line which is what goes to the equalizing reservoir. This thing right here that's the top of it that's the equalizing reservoir portion on the N1A and this is what I'm going to blank off. So I've loosened the bolts on the equalizing uh, valve. The uh, bottom bolt is really hard to get out and I don't really need to get it out so I just loosened them up so that I can slide that piece of uh, metal in between the portion and the pipe bracket, tighten everything back down and that should blank off the valve. So it's blanked off, tightened up. You can see the bit of shininess between the portion and the pipe bracket and that's the blanking plate. So now we'll put air on it and see what happens. Well I've had a fair bit of success uh, blanking that uh, equalizing uh, portion out 
did do the job as far as the big blow so it's out of the picture uh, brakes seem to apply and release and I got the flare fitting taken care of I did use a torch to heat it up and then it flared quite nicely uh, the interesting thing which we still haven't quite figured out is the um, disconnected main reservoir line from the N1A again that's the N1A uh, there's air coming out of that pretty big time there's air coming out of the disconnected uh, number six line which is the, one, the equalizing line that originally came out of the N1A there was air coming out of that and there's air coming out of the five line so um, the only way the air, air could do that is through brake pipe so we do have a brake pipe leak it's not a big one but it's still there so I suspect that you know the whole root of our problem has always been this equalizing portion or application portion here so I will consult with Andrew and uh, we'll probably take it apart again and see if we can figure out what's going on. We may even go so far as to blank it off completely. Okay, we finally figured out what's going on with this application valve. So, we we'll start with the schematic. This again, is this is the application valve here. Drawing of it. And this is the real McCoy. And there's a section here that slides up and down. And main reservoir is at the bottom and this moves around to different, make different connections. So, we'll look at the real McCoy here, that's the cover. That is this, and we will slide that out. And what you see here is a slide. This is what makes the different connections. And looking over here, at the, that's the same thing right there. And that is strictly a slide uh, connection or slide fit which means if there's any scratches or anything in here then air can leak by which is exactly what's happened I don't know if the, the camera can pick it up but there's a bunch of fine scratches on this thing so what's going to have to happen is we'll have to lap using lapping compound we'll smooth this up and there's a ma mating surface inside of here right in there and uh, clean the dirt up, clean it up, and maybe it will work. So we will see. So this is the coarse lapping compound. So we'll take a little dab of it. It's a big dab, little dab. Put it on the surface. Maybe a little more. Maybe a little in here too. There we go. Spring in. Put it in. Now, lap in, lap out, lap in, lap out. Back and forth, and forth and back. And you do this for a while. Well, after struggling with this thing for a while and not getting much results, I figured out that uh, that little spring really wasn't pushing that much force against the sliding surface. I figured out how to remove the pin and separate the slide from the plunger. So this should go a little bit better now. It's much easier to put in and take out. All right, I think we got it. Uh, we went from the coarse grit uh, lapping compound to fine, and then from fine we uh, put some oil with what was left of the fine and worked it back and forth. So that's the movable part. And if we can get the light right, that's the uh, stationary. We're going to give it a try. Well, we got it all back together, hooked up, 
got air on it and guess what didn't fix the problem so we had a lesson in lapping but I don't think lapping of that slide valve was the issue most likely there's some kind of problem in the ports on the application portion but uh, we're not going to battle that any further uh, we had already figured uh, plan B was working that's going to be essentially to bypass this whole safety control system and uh, all that's going to involve is capping off a few of the lines that go to that application portion and that'll solve our problem we won't have the dead man pedal but uh, we really don't need it you know, for a switch engine like this one it's really not needed very very few switch engines had dead man pedals or alertness devices of any kind and the speeds we run it's just simply a nuisance well the education through frustration continues um, I, when I took this application portion apart I noticed that the uh, um, ports in it were pretty small and for brake pipe to go through it's a pretty large volume so uh, it's like an inch and a quarter pipe so uh, what I figured out is this actually uh, one of the many things it does is it sends a uh, um, air signal through the brake pipe line to what's called the cutout valve which is this down here so it's just a small out valve small line that comes to this and when there's air pressure sent from this thing to here it opens this up and allows brake pipe to flow through so what I did was use the same kind of piece of sheet metal blanked this off and then I took the guts out of this and uh, put it back on so that uh, there's no air controlling this and brake pipe flows right through it so I got it to work no leaks but now I got another issue uh, we can release the brakes we get brake pipe just like we're supposed to but when you make an application it does it equalizing reservoir goes down but brake pipe doesn't and that is controlled by this guy this is the uh, we call it the rotator valve and it has sets for lead and trail and dead and it cuts off brake pipe also when you're in trail or dead and it's doing some really weird things uh, when you put it to trail there's air blowing in places it shouldn't so next step is I'm going to take this apart and see what's going on with this well this is the uh, rotator valve taken apart there's some pieces of debris in there you may or may not be able to see it plus the cap is full of crud so can't really find anything wrong with it obvious other than the dirt so we'll clean that up put it back together and see I cleaned up the road terror valve, got the dirt out of it, put it back together, and it's doing exactly the same thing. So, still don't know why, but uh, just to show you, you know, that's the automatic brake valve. <coughs> These are the gauges. And the white, <coughs> the white gauge on the left is equalizing reservoir. The white gauge or white needle on the right is brake pipe. So we'll make an application noise. And the needle on the left goes down. The needle on the right, which is brake pipe, kind of stays where it is. It moved a little bit. Don't exactly know what's going on, but uh, we're going to try a couple other little tricks and see if we can sort it out. Well, the fun continues with this thing. We get a uh, brake pipe reduction on this line. This line comes from the automatic brake valve. But we don't get anything coming back out this end, which is the outside of the 
M1A and haven't quite figured out what's going on. Now I loosen these flanges where these things connect and I could get air here, no air here, at least not right away, but unfortunately uh, the flange gasket here didn't like being loosened up and now no matter how much I tighten it it still leaks so we're gonna have to take it apart no fun well we pretty much had to go to extreme measures there's no way that I could get to the gaskets on these flanges without taking the whole pipe bracket out so I took the pipe bracket out and all these other fittings all over the place pin over here Here's the pipe bracket. It wasn't a particularly easy task. You know, it's probably been 50 years since that thing was messed with. So, we got this far. We really aren't that fond of having this device in anyway, so we're going to eliminate it. And uh, really all we need to do is we have, should have a means to cut the brake pipe out. So, this is brake pipe in here. And that's brake pipe out. So all I really need to do is to is to run a straight pipe with the cutout cock right through here. That shouldn't be too difficult. I got to take this out because this flange doesn't quite clear the plate. So we'll take that out. And it's out. And it put up a fight. So all those bolts have been in there for a long time. And then they welded the door stop on top of the bolt on this corner. So had to wiggle and schmiggle and whatever get it loose. So here's the first iteration of the uh, new bypass of the N1A. And uh, it's marginally successful. Unfortunately, uh, I used the two flanges that we already had from where they bolted up to the N1A and that didn't work out too well. So we got a leak in there even though I made a gasket for it. The reason is that uh, it's hard to see, but these uh, flanges have O-rings in them and so we've got two flanges O-ringed uh, or o-ring slot to o-ring slot here and even though I made a gasket we didn't have proper o-rings don't have any that are the right size and so it's leaking so we're going to do a different version of this and use a union instead so here's the new iteration of the uh, brake pipe bypass for the N1A and uh, works fine. Uh, Sharp-eyed folks might notice there's a few soap bubbles on the corner of that union. And uh, that's after I tightened it about ten times. And um, We did a leakage test and it doesn't even show up so we're not going to worry about it. Uh, ultimately we'll probably, we will try to get the proper cutout cock for this but this will certainly work for now. The other issue that we had with the uh, brake pipe not dropping when we made a reduction, well, it turns out it isn't the N1A at all. The problems we were having with the N1A masked it, and all my efforts as far as trying to loosen fittings, uh, that's not really the best way to figure out where the leak is coming from. It turns out that the issue was not the N1A but the automatic brake valve. That's the back of it. And this is the automatic brake valve we stole off of one of our other locomotives to test it. Lo and behold, when we make an application,
Pipe goes down, following equalizing reservoir, which is what it's supposed to do. So we have an issue with the automatic brake valve, and I kind of have an idea what it is. Uh, so with that, I'll pull this one back off and put it back where it belongs, and we'll move on. So that's the automatic brake valve off of 8202, and uh, we're about to find out what's under door number one and door number two. Got the cap screws off, and this is the part that's lapped in, and that's what controls what's where, what position, what ports are connected as you move the handle, and. This is the piston valve that operates equalizing, that controls equalizing reservoir and when um, equalizing reservoir changes this moves up and down to either exhaust or charge brake pipe and this is what I think our problem is. So we'll look into that a little more. I pulled this pipe plug out of the bottom of the automatic brake valve and you probably can't see it but there's a boatload of debris in there cleaned a lot of it out, so we go from there. It doesn't look like I fixed the problem, so we'll give it another try, but it uh, looks like it's doing exactly the same thing. The equalizing reservoir is going down, brake pipe isn't, so cleaning it didn't fix it. So, back to the drawing boards. We know it's the automatic brake valve. We just don't know what it is it's causing. Well, it's a rainy day in Georgia. I think somebody made a song about that. Anyway, I'm back at the museum and this issue with the brakes has been bugging me. But I think I have a, figured out a solution, or the solution. And uh, if you'll recall, as we scan over to this air brake diagram, point at the right thing here. Um, this is the equalizing reservoir valve in the N1A, which takes the place of the one that's in the brake valve. And according to this drawing in the book, you blank off the, you remove the piston and blank off the two sections, the equalizing section from the brake pipe section. Well, on our brake valve, uh, that stuff is all there. So, okay, well that must mean that they play together, at least that's what I thought. However, when I looked at that uh, valve and I looked at the other valve on the air brake, automatic brake valve on our other locomotive this little area here had a rather peculiar fitting on it so my theory is that plug has to come out so we're going to take that plug out put everything back together and cross our fingers that it works Well, automatic brake valve's back installed, and lo and behold, works like it should. So all it took was removing that one plug. So 
make us an application. Brake pipe goes down with equalizing reservoir just the way it's supposed to. So, we've got all our air brake issues resolved. And uh, pretty much all that's left is to tidy up all these loose uh, pieces of uh, copper tubing that we're not using anymore. And with Elijah and Ryan's help, we got all the loose superfluous tubing and such uh, cleaned out and removed so it's a much cleaner application here and swing over here all those uh, pieces of copper tubing are gone and over here in the brake stand we took a few items out that didn't need to be there also so nice and clean everything works so we'll put the floor back in so here are all the pieces and parts, all the portions and components that we took off of that locomotive. And you can see there's quite a few of them. A lot fewer parts to have to worry about. And if we pan over here, that's all the copper tubing we took off. So an awful lot of stuff removed and out of the way. Post-mortem, I don't know that I ever quite explained what this uh, issue has been from the beginning, but uh, the uh, equalizing reservoir is uh, gradually creeping up, or was gradually creeping up, and as the equalizing reservoir creeped up, it followed the brake pipe. So the equalizing reservoir and the brake pipe would just keep going up to the main reservoir pressure. And it didn't really matter what position the brake valve was in. So, you know, we traced it down, and this application portion is definitely the root of our problem. And how it works, or what's causing the problem, I'll explain in just a second. So, this is the application portion taken apart. You've seen it before. So, the key on this thing is this slide valve and the slide valve this little spring that holds the slide valve against the surface here is not anywhere near strong enough to overcome the pressures inside here and that's the key so what holds this thing against the seat in here is actually main reservoir pressure and that comes in from the back there's a port on here somewhere that holds so the main reservoir pressure is actually the main thing that holds this lap surface the two lapped surfaces against each other so this is the other side of the portion and if you look closely you can see the port here that's where main reservoir comes in and uh, goes around this part of the slide valve and holds it up against the seat and as you recall, before I lapped it, this was pretty rough. So what was happening is that air was indeed getting past the lap surfaces and going in places where it wasn't supposed to. So basically when I lapped it, I fixed it. The only catch was I didn't realize that main reservoir pressure was needed to keep this thing together. So that's why we had troubles with it. We put it back together and we're still having air blow. So that's the whole key of the problem with this thing but uh, we've pulled it off we've cleaned up everything we didn't need it so long term we're uh, actually better off than we were before so that's the end of the story on this and uh, that's also the end of this video this is a wrap up and uh, as always thank you for watching and if you have a chance, come by the museum. We've got lots of interesting stuff. Thank you very much.